Hi everybody, it's Kristen with Hooks, Books, and Wanderlust, and I am here today with a video pattern for you guys to show you how to make my day and night bookmark. So this is, I don't know what else to call it other than a thong style bookmark, so if you've got a better word for that, please let me know in the comments so I can stop using that. But, um, so it's got a little sun at the top here to make our day, and I got a little cute little moon here at the bottom for night. And this nice long chain here slides easily into the pages of your book without ruining the binding on the book because of being too thick. So I am going to show you guys how to make this. Now, the stitches, it's the pattern and the stitches are all very pretty simple. I would say it's advanced beginner, but if you're not used to working with crochet thread, that might kind of um, increase the difficulty level for you on this project. So you can use whatever yarn you want. I prefer the thread because again, I don't want my bookmarks so thick that they hurt my books that I'm sliding them into. Um, but you could absolutely use like a fingering weight yarn or, um, or maybe even a sport weight. I probably wouldn't go any thicker than that, but do what you want and then just play around with hook sizes. But if you are gonna use thread, for this pattern and, and the way I'm gonna chain out like the number of chains and stuff, it's all gonna be based on using number 10 crochet thread. So here I've got the Curio brand from We Crochet and um, this color is, what is it called? Let's see here, Tea Rose. That seems like the perfect name for this color. So let's go ahead and get started. thread here that I'm gonna work with and because I'm working with thread I'm working with thread hooks so this is a 1.25 millimeter hook and to get started we're going to form a magic circle now I use a little bit of a non-traditional method with this um, because I never could make sense of the regular method so um, I will put a link to my much more slowed down and explained video um, for the magic circle in the description box for you. Um, but let me show you this to you one more time, just in case you're curious. So I'm going to take my yarn end in my left hand and then my working yarn in my right. And I'm just gonna make a loop with the working yarn laying over the yarn end. And then I'm gonna fold that working yarn under the loop, use my hook and pull up a loop there. I'm not gonna pull it all the way tight and instead I'm just gonna go ahead and chain one and that is my magic ring or magic circle however you want to call it so I'm gonna tighten that up a little bit by pulling on that tail make my circle a little smaller a little easier to work into and for round one we are going to work 12 single crochets into that magic circle so we've already chained one so we're just gonna go ahead and single crochet one two and 12. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull on that tail and close the ring a little bit more. I'm not closing it all the way. I'm just going to close it enough to close my circle of single crochet stitches. I'm going to join my round here by slip stitching to the first single crochet of the round. So I got my slip stitch and I'm going to go ahead and tug this a little tighter again. So I'm gonna leave a little hole that's roughly the diameter, maybe a quarter of an inch or just shy of a quarter of an inch uh, diameter here in the center. So that is round one. Pretty simple, 12 single crochets into your magic ring, easy peasy. Okay, so we are ready to start round two. So we're gonna start with a chain one. And for round two, we are going to half double crochet 18 times into the center of our ring and that's gonna be going 
around the single crochet stitches from the previous round. We're not working into the top of the stitches, but we're working all the way around them. So I'm also, as I'm going, kind of working over my tail here, just kind of keeping it tight to the round before it so that I can get it included in there with those single crochets. So I'm gonna go ahead and half double crochet into the ring. Just like that. Again, you're working around it, not into them. Just like so. And what that's going to do is bulk up the center of our sun to kind of make a more pronounced eyelet for the center of the sun. So just keep working those half double crochets all the way around, total of 18. And I will meet you back here at the end of this round to join and begin round three. Okay, so I just finished my 18th half double crochet. I am ready to join to the top of the very first half double crochet of the round to join the, the round together. And just like I did before, I'm going to tug on the tail of my magic ring just to kind of make sure that it pulls all the way through. Um, I don't want any slack from working over it from this last round to be loose in that little eyelet there. So that is what you should have after round two. And now we're ready to begin round three. So for round three, you're gonna start again with a chain one. And in this round, we are gonna make the rays of our sun. So we're gonna do that by working a sequence of stitches into the first stitch and then every other stitch all the way around. So we're gonna start with a single crochet in the very first stitch. Then we're gonna chain two. And then we're gonna single crochet into that same stitch and that's gonna make a point. So you can kind of see it here and we'll work that out and enhance that point a little bit with blocking. So we're gonna skip the next stitch and then we're going to do the same sequence into the following. So single crochet, chain two, and then single crochet in the same stitch. We're gonna keep doing that all the way around. Skip one and then single crochet, chain two, single crochet, into the same stitch. So keep working that around. You'll end up with nine total points and I'll meet you back at the end of the round to join. Okay, so I've reached the end of this round. Now, if you have done this correctly, you should have nine points and you should have ended with one stitch here to skip before joining to the first single crochet of the round to close. And that is it for round three. Now, before we move on to the next part, we are going to slip stitch into that chain two space because I like how the bookmark looks when the chain comes directly from the point. So from here, you can make your chain as long as you want for whatever book you are making it for. Um, I usually make mine to fit a standard sized hardback book, which is nine and a half inches. Now I know that the standards vary across countries. And I also know that some publishers just prefer to do their own thing and make books really different sizes. So whatever you prefer to do, my general rule of thumb is for whatever size you're making, I like to have mine, uh, hang off just the edges a little bit. I don't want it so close that um, the sun is barely peeking out the top of the pages and similar with the moon. So I add a half an inch. So if my standard book is nine and a half inches, then I'm making my chain at 10 inches, if that makes sense, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and chain out until I have reached 10 inches. 
Now, um, for, you know, that's gonna vary a lot on tension. So how tightly you make your chains, but roughly we're in the like 85 to 90 chains area. Really, you don't even have to count. Just chain until you reach the desired length and then add six to that for the moon. So I am going to finish doing that and I'll meet you back here to measure and get started on the moon. All right, so I have finished chaining out until I have reached 10 inches. Now I am measuring that length from the point where I started my chains all the way to my hook. So I've got 10 inches or roughly thereabouts so now I'm going to go ahead and chain another seven chains to help me make my moon. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So to get the curved shape of the moon, we're going to be working stitches of varying sizes. And to also assist with that curved shape, we are going to work increases in some of these stitches. Now an increase means that you're working more than one stitch into a specific location. And in this case, some of those increases are going to be the same stitch and some of those increases are going to be two different stitches. So for the first part of our moon, which is going to be the point, you're going to slip stitch into the second chain here from your hook. Now I always work into that back bump and I'm just going to slip stitch. Take your time with this because especially if you're working with that thread, sometimes it's hard to hold. All right. So that's our first stitch done on our moon. We've just got a single slip stitch right there. The next stitch, again, working into the back bump, I am going to work my first increase. This increase is going to be a single crochet, and then I'm gonna half double crochet in the same spot, same stitch, same chain, whatever. So I am just starting that curve, all right? My next two stitches, my next two chains, are going to be double crochet increases. That means that I'm gonna work two double crochets into each of the next two chain stitches. if I can get my hook under that back bump. There we go. So double crochet, and then into the same spot, I'm gonna double crochet again. And that's my first double crochet increase. Okay, with me so far? So we've got our slip stitch, we've got a single and then a half double, and then we've got two doubles and we're gonna work another double crochet increase into the following chain stitch here. One and two. So there's one and then there's two. Now we have reached the fullest point and passed the fullest point of our moon. We're ready to start making it smaller again, which means we're gonna do that single crochet half double combo, but we're gonna do it in reverse order. So we're gonna do a half double crochet into the next chain. Again, if I can grab that back bump. I'm on the struggle bus, there we go. All right, so half double crochet and then single crochet into that same stitch, okay? And now the last stitch of our moon is going to be our next point and we're just going to work a slip stitch into the next chain and that is it you can tie it off leave yourself a good probably three inch tail here at least maybe four bit a little snip and you're ready to weave in your ends. And you can use your needle and weaving in to kind of close some of those gaps, like at the, um, at the points here where we did our slip stitches, which kind of pulled those chains apart a little bit. And um, then we're ready to move on to blocking. 
So give me one second to thread my needle and I will show you how to close those gaps. Okay, so I have threaded my needle and I am ready to kind of close this off and join any gaps. So I'm going to go ahead and thread my needle down through the next chain in the row here, just to kind of tie that top point of the moon into place. And then I'm gonna come back up through the previous chain and out the back side because I want to work underneath my stitches and I always work under my stitches on the back side of the stitches because it hides it better so you're just gonna want to try and thread through where you can close up any gaps where you might need to and otherwise, just try and work through the V's of your stitch or your stitches. Just go carefully, go slowly if you need to, because again, with that thread, sometimes it's hard to hold on to, hard to get into. And I'm coming up on another gap here. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to kind of come up here where this, here's my single crochet from that chain. If you can see where my needle is. And I'm going to go underneath that stitch, if I can get my needle in there. And pull it through. And then Come down through that slip stitch and out the bottom of that chain. And now I'm going to go up through the next chain where that gap is. And back under that first single crochet that we made in our moon. And that's going to just kind of pull it down and close that gap. Careful pulling too tight because you don't want to get your moon out of shape, but you can fix some of that when you go to block it here in the next step. So you don't have to be too crazy with weaving this in partly because you are going to block it with a sticky kind of glue substance um, and because it's not like it's a wearable it's not going to you're not going to wash this in the machine or anything like that so it's not going to want to come out too easily so then once you have it woven in you can go ahead and snip that just need to go ahead and finish weaving in the tail from our magic circle. Now if you remember when we initially did round two, I worked over that tail. So it's already been woven around once, but I'm going to go ahead and just do another pass. Um, I have a little bit of a gap here and I'm going to close up. I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Get that. Okay. So on the back side here, can see there's like a little gap right there where my, my needle is sticking right in the middle of it. So we've got this as a stitch and this is a stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cover that up by poking my needle right through and making it look closed up. It's <laughs> my little trick of the trade. And then now I've got myself all turned around here. And so then I can just come back through the center hole, back around the other side. And now I'm just going to go weave under the row, round two stitches again. And I don't, I'm not really worried about going too far with it. If you want to go all the way around, you can. It'll be a second time. Um, otherwise, 
again, it's the same thing. You're not gonna like put this in the in the washing machine or anything and worry about it too much. So just get that end woven in. And then when you are satisfied, go ahead and snip that end as well. All right. So there is your finished bookmark. Now you can see that the points on this are a little dull. They're not very sharp. And what I would like to do is block my work. So I'm going to show you guys that process next. Okay, so I am back and we are ready to start blocking our uh, bookmark. Now you are going to need a mat of some kind that you can put underneath. So this is just like a cutting mat that I had from my scrapbooking days that I just use now for this purpose. I've covered it with a little bit of wax paper because the stiffening spray that we use has um, like a glue or a starch or something in it that gets really sticky. So I'm trying to protect my mat. I've got the wax paper pinned down to the mat here in all four corners and I've got some straight pins. I've got my stiffening agent. So I'm using this Aline Stiffen Quick. Um, mine has no longer wants to spray no matter how much I try and clean it because it apparently stiffened the spray. Um, luckily I am able to just dip the bookmark in by opening, <laughs> opening it up. But if you can, Spraying is obviously a better option. Before we get to the pinning part, we are going to go ahead and you, if you have the spray, go ahead and spray it rather liberally. You wanna make sure you get both sides. I'm actually just going to dip mine. I'm a rebel like that, so I'm just gonna stick it down in there. Now, you don't have to really do the, um, the chain length, just the sun and the moon because that's all that really, really needs to stay stiff. So now I've got it really good and coated here. I'm just gonna get some of the excess out of there. But you can see it's really well coated here on both sides. And now I am going to go ahead and use my straight pins. I'm just gonna put a couple at opposing corners or as best as I can here to get started. Easier said than done. There we go. I'm going to do one more here. I'll do it right about here. Just working the pins into those chain two spaces. I'm not going through the thread, I'm going through the spaces, okay? So I am going to pin this to my mat. You can see where I've done the other ones here. <laughs> so I will go ahead and get these pinned in. I just went ahead and got those started so that it's a little easier to work with because this is a rather small sun. So you're gonna just get one in there at an angle because you wanna try and pull those corners apart as much as possible. And then you can tweak them as needed. What did I do here? Got that all kinds of crooked. Just kind of pull those out, adjust as needed. And when you've got those set, go ahead and pin the rest of those points. Always working into those chain two spaces. Okay, so I've got the sun all pinned in. 
And now I'm going to do the same with the moon. I forgot to dip it first. So I'm going to do a quick and dirty dip. Same thing. And I'm not worried about getting the chain, just the moon. Sorry, I bumped the camera. There we go. Even if I did get some of the chain, that's all right too. Not going to hurt anything. So then I am going to, and you don't even really need to stretch it out if I'm being honest, you're only pinning the moon. So we're going to get the first pin at the first point, try and work between the stitches on it. Again, you don't want to pierce the thread. So my last two pins, I'm just going to put in on the curve. You can shape this as needed. adjusting as as you need to there and that is how you block something you're going to let this dry um in my experience this one only takes a few hours like maybe half a day and then you can come back and then you are ready to pull the pins out and then you are left with one of these beauties where the points are really nice and sharp the moon looks like a moon and you have a really cute bookmark. So that is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and be sure to let me know in the comments if you have any questions or problems. I'm happy to help out where I can. If you need the written pattern for this pattern, I will put that on my blog and I'll link that in the description box for you. Um, and if you make this and you want to share a picture, you can at me on Instagram and Facebook, Hooks Books Wanderlust. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye!